let's take a look at programming some buttons on our Mosaic to Sarah. I've already added an interface and created a few pages that will look at programming. If you take a look at each one of these buttons, they have a corresponding key. In this case, timeline 1 is button 1, timeline 2 is button 2, and so on, up until we get to timeline off, which I've set a key of off. Now, when we go to our trigger tab, we have the ability to create some programming for each of these buttons. So I'm going to go to new and add a new TPC button event. At this point, I can come down here and select which button I'd like to work with. If I press tab, I'll get a full list. I'll now come in here and select button 1. Add a new action, which gives me the ability to choose what I want to do. Do I want to, do I want to start a timeline or toggle the timeline? It's completely up to you in your programming style. For this demonstration, I'm going to toggle the timeline. So I select Toggle Timeline and choose which timeline I want. In this case, I'll choose my first one, which is red. I can now upload my configuration. And as soon as that finishes loading, we'll be able to trigger that timeline. Let's take a look at this configuration loaded on the Tessera. Now, when I press the button for timeline one, my first timeline starts. If I press the button again, it turns off. Notice we haven't programmed in any form of indication on these buttons yet. If I go back to the trigger pane, we've only actually made button one work. There's an easier way to do this that we'll take a look at now. If we take a look at our interface, we'll notice that the keys follow an order. The word button followed by a three-digit number. If I want to associate button 1 to timeline 1 and button 2 to timeline 2 and all the way up through timeline 8, I can actually use that based off of the number that's in the key. If we go over the trigger pane, I'll show you how to do this. Instead of just listening for one button, I want to listen to all of them. So I'm going to change my button key here, instead of being button 001, to be button less than 3D greater than. And what this is doing is looking for the word button followed by three digits. At this point, I can now come down and change this from a timeline to a variable. By entering it like this, I'm actually asking Mosaic to capture that number. Once that number is captured, I can use it again. So, when I push a button that says 001, we'll capture the number 1, and then we'll apply that back by saying whatever's in variable 1, play that timeline. So 1 is captured here, and timeline 1 is played here. If we upload this, we'll be able to see this work. Now, when I press my timeline 1 button, it plays. If I press it again, it turns off the timeline. If I press my timeline 2, I now will get timeline 2 running. If I press it again, it'll turn off. And this will work all the way up to timeline 8. Notice we still haven't put any indicators in. Let's do that next. I'm going to go back to my trigger tab, and I'm going to add a new timeline started command. Once we've added our timeline started, we'll notice it's set to timeline any. We're going to actually leave this. This trigger will now fire any time any timeline is started for any reason. I can add a new action here, and in this case, what I want to add is set TPC control state. This will allow me to change the state of the Tessera button based off of whatever timeline is played. When I come down to control, I'm going to use that same variable syntax we used earlier. Type in button less than 3D greater than. Anytime a timeline is played, the timeline number will be captured as a variable. That's a basic principle of timeline started. Now I've asked it to inject that back in. All I need to do now is select what color I want my buttons to turn on to. I'm going to use green. So I type in green, select it from the list. I'm now going to select this trigger and duplicate it. Come over here and change it to timeline released, and change this back to default. This is doing the exact same thing we did for setting a color to green when a timeline started, but setting it back to default when it's released. Let's upload our config and take a look. When I press my Timeline 1 button, Timeline 1 will play. And notice our button now will turn green. If I press it again to turn it off, it'll turn back to silver. Notice this will now work for any of these buttons I use. 
This is a great, easy way to program as many buttons as we need. Because we're capturing up to three digits worth of numbers here, this will work for button one through 999. If I want to change the order of my buttons, all I have to do is go to my interface and change the key. So for instance, if I'd like my first button to actually play timeline four, I can select this timeline, change my key to button 004. I probably want to update my caption too, so I know which one I'm working with. Now I'll come down to four and I'll change this one back to one. By using this simple association between the keys, I can reposition any of my timelines on any of my buttons. Let's take a look at what we can do for our off button. I'm going to add a new MTPC button event, type in the off button that I had in there, and add a release all timelines command. Now since I've created my indicators to be based off of started and released, I don't have to add anything else in here to control my indication states. I'm going to upload my config and take a look back at our touchscreen. I'm going to play a couple of timelines here. Notice they're all stacking on top of each other. At this point, when I play my timeline off button, they will all release and fade off. By using variables, I was able to reduce the amount of triggers I needed down to a really manageable four triggers, and I still have plenty of room to add more buttons and expand my control. Remember, you have name and description fields in any trigger. It might be a good idea to describe what each of these triggers do so that you remember it at a later point, or if anybody else looks at your configuration, they'll get an idea of what you were thinking.